Welcome Supreme Commanders, friends and those on YouTube that have randomly gone and clicked to today's exciting custom 4 versus 4 going down here on the old Naroxis map generator. The game is of course Supreme Commander Forge Lines forever, don't forget the forever bits. As we introduce our two teams then we'll start with team number one and these are the yellow guys on the Upper East Side today. I will start on this position over here. We've got ourselves Grumpy, he's a 1300 Seraphim player, he's going first land in Burgundy Red. As we come away, let's uh, move over to the middle position for his team. We've got ourselves uh, from the Brazilian clan DCCC97. This guy features an awful lot. I think he's got a lot of games under his belt. We'll refer to him affectionately as Brazil. Rolls off the tongue a little nicer than DCC97. And to finish it off on the front line, perhaps I shouldn't click on the minimap, that was kind of kind of rubbish of a uh, transition, weren't it? In yellow, we've got ourselves Babel. He's a 1400 Aeon, also having gone first land. As we round off team one in the rear with the gear then, we've got ourselves Scorpy, a 1700, the highest rated in today's game, going first land in brown, also as Aeon. So we switch over to the other side then, team two. And uh, we've got ourselves, let, let's start this position here, on the easternmost position on the west side. We've got Balfron, he's a 1500 pink in UEF going first land. As we continue along the front line in an anti-clockwise motion this time, we've got ourselves Grey. Zaz, 1900, the highest rate player on his team. Zaz Nuba, also one of the old time favourites, uh, Featuring on the channel, uh, often going first land, second land in Seraphim. And finishing off the front line, I think making his debut uh, on Tactical Takeover, we've got our Stelz Blackstar. 0150, 0150. I think we'll just go with Blackstar. Also going Seraphim, also going first land there in Carty Green. And last but not least, in the rear with the gear for Team 2, we've got our Cells Fong. Fong, who's today not got his summoning circle, if I can zoom in in the right place, there he is, bit of manual reclaim on the tree clumps, because why not, not something that you see every day uh, from a commander, but you see it here today, so yeah, Fong, having gone first sand in UEF, I think Fong likes to play as UEF, and I don't blame him, because it was uh, the faction that I like to play too, uh, just before we do uh, go back to full, let's have a little look on the old reclaim values, just over 20,000, ticking to just under 20,000 mass scattered somewhere across the map. Get a little bit of music on so I don't feel like I'm entirely alone. Map dimensions for anybody that cares. Let's get the old ruler out. 15 by 15. That's uh, always good to know. I do hope one day somehow they'll be able to deal with these black bars, but I don't actually think it's possible, unfortunately. At least we've got a nice looking mini map and we've got our first bit of aggression as well. Thanks to Babel, he's moving in with a bomber preceded with a spy plane. Spy plane takes a look at what he can see and first bomber, first kill bags himself an engineer that was getting the mass there. And we see some order actually firing on the grounds. Balfron paying attention there, splits his engineers off, thus saving them. But ba Babel says, fine, I'll give you a hover bomb then, see what you think of that. Bags himself a second engineer, heavily damaging several PGen. Bomber still circling in a threatening manner, doesn't quite get a bomb away. Balfron spits out some anti-air. And that looks like it's a perfectly placed bomb. Balfron's so busy on the anti-air side, he thinks he forgot to move these engineers. The bomber there take and kill three, four, and five as the bomber itself is shot down. With that, a heavily damaged Tech 1 mass extractor halfway up to Tech 2. It would have been a shame uh, had Balfron lost that, but he didn't. And so Babel there getting some nice kills. Meanwhile, further north, Brazil on his raid with Aeon. The flare, arguably the best. Uh, raiding unit that there is in the game and that one there gets himself two engineer kills 
before finally coming down we've got yet more flares coming through the mid here they run into a superior army there from Zaz with tanks uh, so that's not going to go too much further we do however have yet another flare together with scout over here belonging to brazil there is an engineer creeping up and i assume at some point uh, brazil is going to give the order and get those guys uh, or get that engineer taken out. A little bit of air, a little bit of intel, but the first real set of units that are about to cross the halfway mark appear that they belong to Zaz. Let's see what he's got there. Five tanks, two scouts, and uh, four anti-air. Fearing still take one bomber stage. Grumpy doesn't appear to be making a play for the side. And the reason I mention it is Blackstar's actually made a very fast play. Unusually so for an early stage of a game like this. It's quite a ways away from his base. Doesn't appear like it's going to have the biggest uh, impact on the game ever. But it's Blackstar who's playing, not me. Uh, players on the opposite side of the map completely ignoring theirs. Take a look at this. The uh, mass point back here is actually landlocked. Appears to be a plateau or a valley. Or a canyon, perhaps we should say. Just the one mass point in there, but there is uh, some building area to be had. And some water to hide in, should players wish. Meanwhile, centrally... Brazil is pushing back again once more, and again it's predominantly with the flares. To take uh, two shots from a commander to kill, unlike every other faction. And here we have a Yenzine that can't seem to uh, hit the water even though it's falling out of a boat. Tech 1 bomber there, far more effective at taking out these pesky flares. Uh, no doubt Brazil knew what he was doing when he sent those in. And Saz, yeah, mopping up with the bomber. Seems that these Tech 2 units really have difficulty in dealing with these units. I mean, there's yet another Yenzine really struggling to take out the unit, I suspect. And yes, it was the Ilshi that finally did it. So there you go, top tip. If you're Aeon, build flares. And if the other guy is Seraphim and spamming hover tanks, build more flares. Brazil pushing down south, assisting his pal Babel, raiding here. Zaz a little light on units in this area, although he does have it covered with bombers in fairness. So it's not quite as bad as it otherwise might be. We've got some pressure down here from Babel as well. Players in the middle of the map getting upgrades. Brazil, who's going for the sensor suite first. Zaz going for the gun. Both players have paused at eight minutes. I assume they're running a little light on power. Speaking of which, let's have a little look. How are they doing? Mass totals 73 to 71, 74 to 72, now 74 to 73. So very, very close. We're talking a couple of percentage points at the most, separating the two teams ever so slightly favoring team one uh, of course we were expecting uh, team one also with a slightly higher rating so that's perhaps understandable let's take a look on energy income there's actually a big difference on energy team one over a thousand energy ahead per tick at this stage so they've got themselves a couple of energy generators at the tech two stage that their opposing their opposing team does not And Babel is currently the only player that is beyond the 50 way mark. Got to be careful though. He is surrounded uh, with Balfron on one side. Got himself Zaz on the other. So he can very easily find himself unable to escape. That said, Brazil is behind his flank and does appear to be a bit of an order there to pull back. There we can hear the first. Actually, it's not a breakthrough from Gumpy at all. Gumpy is right back near his base. 
It's Zaz who's just pushing a few units through, making sure he's awake. Grumpy says, yep, I'm awake. Deals with the attack personally. Uh, Fong having come out to play as well. Fong, of course, the air player. Uh, we do have a response, yes, from Scorpy, who's also playing. Scorpy, who's got the uh, sniper com upgrade. Saz going for the tap missile upgrade. He's got the gun, but he's not, he's not got tech 2 yet. So it's going to take a while, certainly without any assistance, to get that upgrade. Okay, he's got two or three units with him, so it's not too bad. And this is potentially a probably a for Babel, as we've got units here from Balfron that may be moving to cut off his escape and any reinforcements. Looks like Babel's finally realised that. We've also got uh, Zaz moving in from the other side. These are Tech 2 units as well, so they're going to be able to brush this aside pretty quick. Does Babel have the ability to overcharge? Yes, he does. He's got a full energy bar as well. Oh, it never hurts to get another. Meanwhile, Brazil decides to push here up against Zaz. Zaz is going to have to think, and he does. He's already cancelled the upgrade as Brazil continues to push down. Zaz got no choice but to run away now, looking very light on units. Brazil there with these annoying Aeon shields that, of course, absorb so many shots before going down unless the commander could afford to overcharge Abel somewhere taking some heavy hits Malfron well look at this he's overcharged and he's got units there's spam and Babel knows it's over he decides he may as well walk towards the units and the commander get as many kills as he can and there he goes Babel the first player to bow out inside the 12th minute as Balfron dispatches him there. Uh, aggressive play from the 1400. This time didn't pay off as he overextends. And uh, Balfron makes him pay. First player going down from Team 1. Another little look. What, what is this guy doing over here? I do wonder. He's uh, got the Tech 1 Navy. So it was a rush to build the Navy Yard from Black Star, but uh, other than that, it's just sitting there. Black Star's perhaps a little light on units, but at 1,000 rated, perhaps we can forgive that. He is going heavy for the tech, though. Come on, come. As Zaz facing off Brazil, the two highest rated players in today's game, going one-on-one. -on -one. Brazil with the mobile shields. Zaz, I would argue, with the uh, better unit. The two cancelling each other out quite well. Let's see, actually, Zaz... Fearing the shield there. The thing is, with the shields, you can keep fulling them forward. So, okay, the overcharge cuts through one shield, but you keep fulling them, the shields forwards. We've seen it before where players just completely swarm a commander with shields, and despite all the shooting, nothing is getting any damage anywhere. So Blackstar has uh, finally decided to produce some more engineers over here. What have we here? Fong who's got himself good tech 2 and the tactical missile launcher this was always a setup I liked next place to go is of course tech 3 so everything rebuilds slightly quicker but a commander in this setup can vet extremely quickly so it is of course based upon mass killed and it's very easy to destroy uh, tech 2 mass points with the TML and with it, the vet. And in fact, there is a missile. I thought you might fire at the Tech 2 point defense, but no, he fires uh, probably where the commander was stood, uh, in fairness. Fung there just getting his first rank. Yeah, and he's going to be able to. I was going to say outrange what Grumpy's doing, but Grumpy there 
goes for attack missile defense but it's too far away the first point defense there completely destroyed I don't even think it's left a wreck no the attack missile there completely destroying what was left over and if Grumpy isn't able to do something about that soon it's very light on units is Grumpy 1300s um, the commander is tech 2 with the gun he's perhaps trying to rush uh, tech 3 there are a few tech 2 units uh, making their ways down but just feels a little light and I think that bad situation is going to get a whole lot worse from Grumpy because there is no navy and Black Star skip right over tech 1 he's gone straight for tech 2 there's the cruisers and of course these are going to overwhelm the tap missile defense so unless Grumpy's going to put a lot of effort into holding and he's not, he's bailing out. There's only one tap missile defense here. That's not going to take long before it's uh, Finny. Uh, Fong, look at this. Taking the opportunity to just take pot shots elsewhere. We've got undefended Tech 2 mechs here going down from Grumpy. And yeah, look at that. He's already Tech 2. He was Tech 1 last time he finished. He's at the top end of Tech 2 now. This is going to be guaranteed Tech 3 vet. More missiles, multiple missiles in the air there from Fong. I bet you if you asked him, that's why he likes playing UEF. Of course, Seraphim also have access to the uh, very similar missile at the uh, tactical missile stage. But no Billy. But otherwise, if you kid it out with tech, missile and gun, it's a uh, relatively similar commander insofar as this game goes. Fong now on the top end of Tech 3, but we've got a big raid here from Brazil. And again, littering his army with his annoying shields, but Zaz says, yeah, two can play at that game as Zaz builds the uh, Tech 3 Seraphim shield. Brilliant, brilliant unit. Got some siege tanks here. Belonging to Zaz as well. There are a couple of Harbs there from Brazil. Not the best T3 unit ever made. Although I do like the cheeky reclaim feature. Although I can tell you what uh, Brazil will not be liking. And that is Fong, who, whose direct opponent... Well, I say Fong, is actually on air, but because... <laughs> Should be getting some more pressure down here from Grumpy, but Grumpy's been forced onto the back foot uh, thanks to Blackstar and this navy here. So where there's uh, three cruisers, next is going to be four. I think we've all seen that game before. And that's freed Fong up to just completely obliterate the front line. So somebody somewhere, somehow, is going to have to start building tap missile defense. Otherwise... We're going to see stuff like that. There's Fong saying, shh, don't tell him, don't tell him. I'm having a whale of a time here. There's another one. He's going to be a five star pretty much. He's uh, halfway up through four. And I think one more max and Fong will be capped out. Meanwhile, we'll take a look over on the opposite side of the field. Scorpy with his halves. It's me saying they're not that great, but oh, they're tangled with a couple of Percy's. One of the Harbs is heavily damaged. Well, if Scotty can put his full health ones up front and cycle around with the shield with a bit of micro, of course the Harbs can win. Because of course the assuming you've got the micro to spare me while Fong, look at him, just devastating that front line. I know I keep going on about it, but Fong, when you see somebody play UEF and play it right, it's, uh, it's a wonder to see. Does of course leave a relatively exposed commander near the front line, but that said, Fong's also on air, so only himself to blame if he gets sniped. And of course, he's got the ability to throw spy planes forward as he is doing, as and when. Let's have a little look what uh, Team 2 can see. Well, there they go, they've got quite an aggressively placed Tech 2 radar as well. No Omni as of yet. Team 1, meanwhile, a much more limited amount of intelligence. Could just, of course, be that Scorpy 
sent a spy plane over moments before, although as soon as I say that, Brazil pushes some through. Let's see what uh, Brazil sees. Oh, there's your answer. Good eyes on the base. As we roll around to the 20th minute then, it seems that both teams have decided uh, just to give it a moment while they amass superior forces. Perhaps the exception to that rule, Scorpi here on the lower eastern flank. The only guy really trying it with some probing attacks. Nice pick up there. Now this is predominantly shields and flak, so if Scorpi picks up on that, he could... Well, there's some Percy's waiting further behind, so who knows. Yeah, so 20 minutes, let's have a little look there. Now we doing some mass income. Uh, 824 versus uh, 622. Assuming those are live values, that's quite an advantage to Team 1. And that's despite the fact that they've lost several mass points over here. They're actually controlling much less of the map. So maybe there's your answer. Team 1 gone a little harder on Eco, and as a consequence didn't have enough units to hold the line. Team 2... The opposite of that. And Grumpy's going to have to think of Summit somehow. Otherwise he's going to be a... Mute Force. Yeah, more missiles being threaded through. Oh, that does appear that Brazil has finally thought the answer. With his tap missile defence there. Although, being A on tap missile defence, I think the missile can fly over the top. So they may be the best tap missile defence in the business of defending certain areas, but as we saw there, the missile went straight over the top. I believe that's how it was. It certainly appeared to be there. Oh, look at this. Grumpy, he's eating a lot of uh, missiles there. Gotta move. For sub 2,000 hit points. Yeah, you don't want to stand still next to a whole bunch of cruisers. That said, finally... What's these? Ilshis. Oh, not necessarily the best. The cruisers move away. Oh, look at those devastating missiles. We did, however, get a notification from Team 1. They've managed to build an experimental thanks to Brazil. And there we see it. 22 minutes. A GC. And that is pretty quick by anybody's standards. And it's not as if that Brazil had nothing else to do. We see he's got a whole uh, Tech 3 army as well. On a map that's not made of mass. Which, okay, there was a bit of reclaim. But I've certainly seen more. I still think that was a very quick build. Let's see if he's able to make it pay. Brazil also with this huge army. Still up front personal as well with the old uh, sensor suite giving him decent global vision. I guess he is now deciding it's uh, sort of time to think about backing off. When you are at the experimental stage, it's never great to have your commander on the front line. It looks like Ashley Grumpy's finally fought something to deal with these cruisers. He's built him, sent a whole bunch of hover tanks. And Black Star, uh, perhaps bolstered by all his success of cruisers, thought, well, I don't need to build anything else except cruisers. Which is a nice idea until somebody thinks of something like this. And Grumpy may have just come up with the perfect counter. And I'm aware we've got experimental mayhem about to unfold in the middle. But there we go, the hover tanks. And they are uh, far more accurate versus the cruisers than those old... Light assault bots and providing Grumpy can keep these units moving in. We see the cruisers are having a uh, look with them. But down goes the first cruiser. There's the second. The third is not going to be long to follow. And with that, the uh, exploits that uh, Blackstar's been enjoying may be about to come to an end. Let's so come back through to the central regions. And Brazil... Looking incredibly dangerous as we approach minute 25. GC, lots of shields, a whole pick and mix of units there. Including, of course, the shield, which, you know me, mobile shields, whether it's uh, land, sea, not really on the air unless we're talking uh, 
the UEF Continental Airways, but other than that, Shield of any description is a force multiplier. Cybrid, of course, has the stealth unit, which used right, very similar. Just depends uh, how much air is around as to whether the Cybran can work, but certainly the shields here is going to give a big advantage to our Brazilian friends. Can of course throw the shields forward, which he is now doing. In come a huge wave of Tech 2 fighter bombers from Black Star, so he can do more than just spam cruisers. And with it, the GC is almost half health. And thanks to the pick and mix there, which included Flak, it's only going to be one fighter bomber that gets a second pass on the GC. But that is all. Here comes the air now from Fong. He's gotten a couple of uh, gunships there, broadswords, right tech three, but there's enough flak there uh, to dissuade them. But actually, that was enough of an attack to make Brazil think twice. He's backing off. Once more, he sends the GC forward by itself. I wouldn't send it too far forwards by itself. I'm not sure if this was perhaps a bit of a misclick here from Brazil or attention elsewhere. And this is never good. You never want your back of the GC facing towards the enemy that getting shots for free. I guess it was a misclick. Brazil in panic throws his shields forwards. Now you want to spin the uh, GC round once again. They can see just how many shots those shields absorb, especially when they're layered. You crack through one shield, there's five more. Although probably one of the best methods of dealing with shields is the spearhead. Tech 3 mobile missile doesn't even need to be accurate, it just needs to hit anywhere within the bubble of a shield, and with it, it's going to degrade that shield pretty quickly. Meanwhile, Fong decides to uh, wrap up the flank with his air, and that's going to force Brazil to think of something else, unless he wants to lose all of this. Scorpi seems a little light on air and is unable to deal with. The broadswords, of course, the uh, anti-air capability of the broadsword, much less than the restorer. So Fong has to really make sure he retains air dominance with his ASF. All those broadswords are not going to be long for this world. Seems like Scorpy's going to have a go, but I feel like he's just going to throw away his air here. You know, so what if he gets two or three of those broadswords? It's, it's not really enough. Uh, Grumpy's going to have to think of some anti-air and flak and quick. Meanwhile, we'll focus back it over here. Brazil making a push. This a uh, stack forward emplacement that Zaz Nuba had set up. He did have a few units. He's got a few sniper bots. They're now bailing out as he realises all hope is lost. Actually, some of these sniper bots have gotten caught. Strategic bombers coming in now from Fong. And then focusing on the old GC. Just as Balfron trickles in a load of shields. He says, what was that thing about that force multiplier thing? <laughs> I know. We'll send loads of shields in. And that appears to have done the trick. Thanks to the air. GC is on the run. A uh, couple more direct hits, and I'm sure that's down. Uh, Fong probably going after some other units other than the GC. Zaz realizes they're on the run, just shoots them off with the sniper bots. Meanwhile, further to the west, or should we say east? We've got yet another GC flanked with a bunch of harbs. This GC, though, is getting completely swarmed with Percy's as well as shields. And that's only going to go one way. And it ain't in the way of the GC. Actually faring quite well for quite some time. But there it goes. And again, here we see just how beneficial it is to have this bubble of shields. An inferior number of purses they're able to deal with the harbs, especially if uh, Balfron rolls those shields forward, which he's now doing. That's a very effective win. 
meanwhile over here, Funk continually applying pressure with more and more broadswords. Well, there's nothing else for it. Brazil and the rest of Team 1 must know they've lost control of the skies. They're going to force into producing more flak, more walking SAM sites than they might otherwise like to do. And there's a very heavily damaged GC going down the 29th minute, just inside the half hour. I believe that was actually the first experimental built, even though it wasn't the first to die. And Brazil now much weaker force than we saw him wielding five or ten minutes ago forced into a retreat we see a race here between the two top players who can get the reclaim in the quickest and it would appear with a lovely spread move there from uh, Zaz that Zaz is going to win that fight Balfron also flying in a couple of sparkies why not you can see there's a whole bunch of mass there Zaz also the first player to secure it to ensure that any engineers that are trickling through from Brazil and we do see Brazil making an attempt there they're just not going to get very much okay there's a few shot down aircraft further north perhaps still it's always worth it so half hour let's have a quick look on the totalizers 1.25 million favoring team one team two just tip it over a million now it's about uh, 20 or so percent advantage to team one across the totality of the game which uh, may be about to change with the fortunes in the mid there beginning to reverse as Saz pushes out with a whole bunch of siege tanks could do with a mobile shield or two but Zaz knows better than me. We see a, actually an inferior force there from Brazil. And I think Zaz is making him pay. Also some terrible formation here thanks to these mountains. Meaning that a lot of the units belonging to Brazil are not able to fire. Thus allowing a larger number of units from Zaz to fire on a smaller number of units and was that a Billy or was that a dead commander well there's your answer Billy and I'm not sure how many units Scorpio had there and here he is Fong he's made the switch up to Billy and his tech 3 he's got 22,000 mass killed and he's firing yet another Billy out this could be the weapon that's about to wipe the smile off Team One's face is firing it straight into Brazil. Oh, that's going to connect. That hurts. So we had 22,000 mass. What now? 29. <laughs> 7,000 mass killed in one shot. Got a whole bunch of air here from Scorpy, which, if only he knew that Fong was right there, he does, however, bag himself the fat boy. Fair enough. Now there's an air fight. Scorpio does have access to the restorers. And so Fong. Ah, Fong's got numbers on air. But it's going to be pretty close, and they're fighting over the top of some anti air there from Brazil. And Scorpio wished he could have a bit more anti air, and there is some more over here as well. We got SAM sites as well. Looks like Fong. Wishes to continue the fight. Yet yeah, another Billy fired in there. What's Fong doing now? Goes from 29 to 34,000 mass killed. Although there is a GC moving its way down here from Brazil. Fong playing loose and fast. That's where medals are given out in war. And unfortunately people die as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy game. What is we over here? So Zaz getting some engineers in. Are they for reclaim purposes? Yes, they are. Fine, if you don't want to reclaim your own shipwrecks, I will, says Zaz. Out comes another Billy versus this force over here from Scorpion. And that's going to be a perfect shot. And with it, what looked like a pretty reasonable force there belonging to Scorpio is all but wiped out. Fong is now up to 42,000 mass killed with his commander. 
And I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. Of course, Fong controlling the skies. He can probably keep on doing this, providing he doesn't lose control of the skies. Team 1 are going to have to think of an answer. Of course, we saw him ahead. Economically speaking, that was a nice bomb into the side of numerous siege tanks there. So we've got ourselves a chicken versus GC. And it looks like it's going to be very close, but the first GC goes down. There are, however, yet another GC together with another chicken as reinforcement. Brazil sending more and more stuff down. A huge wave once again of fighter bombers into the constructing GC that was underway there. Black Star once again making good use of himself. Oh no, Zaz has managed to sneak through a heavily damaged chicken bot. But even though Team 1 have been able to take that out, no problem. The Ion Storm is going to eat into a lot of Tech 3 build capacity. They've got a halfway built GC. That's probably going to go down as well. And there we can see the Iron Storm with 6 kills, 7 kills. Actually, I uh, didn't even realise this, but the Iron Storm gets veteran C. Look at that, 4,000 mass killed now from the Ion. Now 5,000. We've got Billy's coming in. There's 6,000 mass. 18. Unbelievable. Look at that. 19,000 mass killed from the Ion Storm. 20 kills. Yeah. So that's a uh, chicken probably did more harm post death than before. Yet another Billy going in there. And that's a huge bank of oblivion turrets that have gone out. I reckon Fong might have just helped turn the tide of this game I just wonder team one got anything well Scorpio look at this his score is way up ahead at 1.24 million oh so if anybody can he can but uh, Brazil there taking out apologies for missing that it would appear that somebody uh, Balfron is it it is Producing the satellites. Brazil there saying Scott lost air badly on this one. Uh, he did, but he does have the bigger eco, so I do wonder if Scorpy's got anything brewing. Yet another Billy Nuke going in. There are a couple of TAP missile defence structures here. Question is, are they in range? And there's your answer. No, they're not. Fong, of course, moves his air out the way while the Billy comes and moves it back in to pick off what's left. Experimentals faring much better against the Billy, of course. Billy able to pretty much one-shot most if not all tech three units but uh, not tech four well maybe here's what was taking so long the salvation there from scorpy opens up it's a little far forward for my liking but regardless and well yeah no surprise there the salvation begins fire versus the satellites that taken out brazil the strongest player of team one and he has come back the shields do get cracked. And the satellites now taking damage. Oh, down goes the first satellite. The two more heavily damaged. There is the response now. It's a little bit of randomness in the targeting there. It looks like uh, the second sat is about to go. Come on, crack that shield. There we go. Surely that's going to hit. And there we go. Sat number two out of three is taken down. That's already going to ease up the pressure somewhat. Take a look back through the central region. It's like Grumpy. It's taking a more proactive role in the middle since the device, uh, demise of Brazil. Well, Scorpy sat on three bases. Spy run there. From team two, seeing what's what. Let's have a little look. 
skill wise what we're talking 107,000 mass already on the salvation billy coming the other way i do like that we can see these billies more clearly now this is yellow dot moving across the screen towards the right we do have tap missile defense there from scorpy and there we go the aeon tmd doing its thing and the billy is no more nuclear missile out also from scorpy first nuke out from team one so could this be the beginning of the counter counter attack let's have a little look on the totalizer team one still ahead and it still looks like uh, it's not quite 20 percent anymore it's closer to 10 percent nuke flies uh, over the central region and Balfron's on the run and that's gonna hit the base or what's left of it the sat under construction together with the heavily damaged sat and with that Balfron and his main base not much left and I think yeah even though he wasn't necessarily the highest rated opponent. Uh, he certainly had the most dangerous base. Once again, Fong. <laughs> Look at this. He's so, like, there's this huge army. And Fong's like, so what? I'll just fire a billy at you if it comes my way. Just as well that there ain't, uh, <laughs> that Cybrans ain't playing. It's the Cybran bot. I don't know why I said Seraphim bot to cast. It's the Cybran Tech 3 bot that can, of course, deflect missiles, which include billies. Just don't tell Fong I told you. Uh, 84,000 mass there from Fong. And Grumpy, no choice but to run away with this army. I think really the only thing you can do versus a command like this if you can't uh, bring support commanders forward who can build tap missile defense as you go is to split your army up. In comes Billy Nuke. And there, uh, Scorpy. It's a line of tap missile defense on in the nick of time. And we've got ourselves a fat boy now from Balfront. Fat boy that, uh, as far as I'm aware, seems a lot more devastating than it did a little while ago. We've got an experimental bomber there as well from Zaz. Bomber gets shot down. Causes the damage. Billy Nuke there. But that's a big hole in the wall. Salvation still safe. Uh, Scorpy very quickly and wisely prioritizes tap missile defense. You don't need that many. Just need one, maybe a second one for reserve. Better is to spread them around a little bit so that if one gets damaged, it looks like team two. And understandably so, focusing in on this area. Let's slow down time a bit. Get some cinematic. As the fat is moving in. God, that black border there is ugly. Let's get it that way. Look at the anti air, the Cougars. Chuck it up, that triple A. Radar guided. Percy's moving in. Fatty moving in. Salvation still firing. Scorpy's forced into pre preventative measures. Point defense. We've got tech one. We've got tap missile defense. He's now working on uh, Oblivion. We hear yet another nuke out. Also fired from Scorpy. We'll go back to full pace now. Put the health bars back on. As these Percy's moving in, of course, the salvation can't be picked up and moved. Unlike, unlike the Tech Force Cybern Artillery, Scathis, Fat Boy now tipping, long range firing, and there we go, the Salvation has had it. Purse is still alive, and I would say this uh, little side base here that Scorpio adds, that went kind of unnoticed, is now pretty much had it. Uh, the nuke out. Our second nuke out, just as the first. Sorry, it was the same nuke. That right there is painful. And that's Fong's main base that just ate one. 
So at 43 minutes, this is still anybody's game. Players completely ripping the, you know, wow, one another. And, well. That was, uh, that was another Billy Nuke. Of course, uh, Billy Duke capable of wiping out enemy aircraft should it happen. Fong, look at that. 97,000 mass killed. And he's still going. Scorpy's fancying an air fight over on the far side of the field. It's one or two Sams in the area. But Scorpy's going to want to commit one way or the other. You never want to go half measure when it's an air fight like this. Pretty closely contested. Too late for Scorpy to bail should he wish now anyway. But he might actually have the numbers on this. And for the first time... Oh, it's going to be close. Looks like Fong realises it might happen as well. He starts moving his air out the way. Actually, Scorpy doesn't fancy finishing it off. Now we've got long-range artillery flowing across the fields. Uh, thanks to Blackstar. Gotta say, Blackstar, he might have not been the most aggressive player ever when it came to early lands. But he took, uh, he had that navy that, of course, put Grumpy on the back foot. He put those Notha fighter bombers in versus that early GC that took half the health off. Now he's got long range artillery. He's uh, had some more air at uh, crucial times as well. So Blackstar making a. Uh, Good debut and certainly nice team play. It's like Scorpy now taking a particular dislike to <laughs> to to this artillery of Black Star. The Restorers. Well, there's a lot of Seraphim shields there. It's, uh, they've got their work cut out for them. It's like yet more Billies making their way through. Unlike these restorers that are going to get wiped out. Scorpy could do worse than bail out with his air. Try another approach. As Scorpy unleashes another nuke. Just as Fong gets another Billy. What's he got now? 131,000 mass. Man, is this guy sick. He shows no sign of slowing up. And actually keeping his team in the game, it's got to be said... Because Scorpy, there's another nuke. And that's a lot of Tech 3 support factories there. The Balfron ad, that's a lot of purses and shields and whatnot else from the UEF. That won't be heading north for a little while. Let's have a little look then on the old uh, KBR or kill bill ratio. Slightly favouring Team 2. No doubt thanks to... The Billy there from Fong. In fact, I go so far to say that uh, this figure would be reversed were it not for the Billy alone. Plus getting lots of kills for the cost. Take another look now. Grumpy rolling forwards with a chicken. And that's going to go down. That's surely going to take out Zaz's chicken that's heavily damaged. We've got shields... Grumpy could do what he needs to get his units away there. These are just Ion Storms. They're not going to win a fight versus two Ion Storms. Grumpy says, all right, all right. I've got it. I've got it. Calm yourself. Just as uh, Scorpy sends in yet another wave of Restorers. I think Saz realizes where this is going. There's more and more Lightning Tanks making their way here. Scorpy's got to pay attention to these. He's losing Restorers. There's now a second artillery piece online here from Black Star. The first one with 70 kills. This time, I wonder, do we have enough uh, of these to crack through the shields? I mean, there's a whole bunch of layered shields. And it looks like the first ones are going down. Let's slow down time a little bit because... Perhaps we can get some of the uh, nice, pretty effects here. Nice and shiny. Colors clash a little bit. Makes it kind of difficult to see. It's much easier when we've got simple uh, red versus blue. 
yellow certainly blends in somewhat with the desert, but uh, go for the artillery, for goodness sake. Forget these outline energy generators. Go for the artillery. The artillery. Please go for the artillery. We've got more and more anti-air tipping into it. Finally goes for the P-Gen connecting to the artillery. That's a decent decision. Why do you get it to go bang? There it goes. One artillery piece down. What about this one here? We've got a full health artillery piece. Whoa, down that goes. I say it's down. No, it's not. The artillery piece, look at that. One remaining there with 1,500 hit points. They were still restorers in the area. But I don't think Scorpi has realized. I say there's still restorers. There are no more. There we see the last one taken down. I don't think the Scorpi saw that. We can forgive him for that because I don't think I saw it either. Oh, look at that. I'm with it. Uh, Black Star and his artillery fights for another day. We'll go back full pace. So it's not entirely over yet for Team 2. Uh, Fongo's managed to re-establish himself with a base further north. Uh, Balfron done something similar over here as well. And Zaz also still doing okay. Alright, so what have we got uh, on the way from Team 1? Gumpy, again, got to be careful. We know Fong's around. Fong could one-shot all of that if he got into position. Gumpy, okay, yeah. Perhaps need a little more powers. We're seeing the shields blinking off there. Never a good thing. Oh, no. Half of the air grid here. Looks like there was an experimental bomber that went into that at some point. Those guys truly missed that. Together with this artillery... Uh, get into fights once more. Some nice team play there from Fong, realizing it's a crucial part of the map. Scorpy flies in a few restorers. I'm not sure what this was. No intel, or he saw blobs, or there's no radar, or what. <laughs> All of those restorers are going to go down for naught. And this is where. Despite any advantage, well, actually, Team 2 still ahead on mass, so I don't think there is an advantage. We certainly know Team 2 have the advantage on players as well. And actually, I don't believe this. Team 1 and their sphere of influence is beginning to collapse. We've seen this go this way and that way more than once. Maybe even twice. Max Stars take the opportunity to rebuild his navy. this uh, play from Scorby. Saz moves forward with a superior army. So Scorby moves in through the back door with an isolated GC rather than going head on with an enemy that you can't possibly defeat. These four experimentals on this part of the map all belong to Zaz. Just the one there from Grumpy. I can tell you which way that way goes. Scorpy chucks out another nuke. So far, most, if not all, the nukes, I believe, have connected in this game. But uh, sooner or later, somebody somewhere is going to think of an anti-nuke. And Zaz is the one. One in the clip. No more. Artillery, long-range standoff, continuing to make a nuisance of itself. How many kills has that sucker got now? 20. As Zaz continues with this lethal look in force, we've got Fong on his flank, hooking up with yet more chickens. Grumpy with an isolated one there. Again, one versus four. Ion Storm might get a little bit of health on the back end. 
Another chicken here from Grumpy. This is a little more even, but there are still units here from Zaz. Otherwise... I think Team 2. That's all this GC. Being moved in from Scorpy. Just lacking air. All of these T1 bombers, more of them tipping in all the time. They're just going to uh, dissipate the hit points of that GC. Even if the GC is able to make a little bit of damage, it's not going to be game changing at this point. Team 2 actually getting units onto the back plateau now, belonging to Team 1. Big spy run there from Team 2. Lots of intel on what's going on. Scorpy does appear that he's trying to get a few strategic bombers together. Perhaps going for a late snipe. I mean, it could do worse than snipe Fong, for goodness sake. 142,000 mass on his commander. We'll have to see if he uh, decides to try and get some more. Uh, Zaz, well, he was pushing and then decides to turn round. One heavily damaged chicken. Uh, two more, though. Uh, it seems pretty much unstoppable at this point. Strap bombers come. One, two. And what? Between the two of them, they crack a shield and get. Oh, that one misses and gets shot down. Perhaps uh, miss click. As we finally got some static artillery going the other way once more. 27 kills there from Scorpy. 28. Scorpy's trying to get more GCs online as well. But at some point, the eco or lack thereof... Oh, that's going to be nice. It connects. This is uh, the new air grid. Tafong's going to... Yeah, he's forced onto shield assist. Some of the air grid going down. Fong's going to repay that with a Billy. Wants to get straight into the side of three experimentals. Okay, it's not going to kill him, but I mean, what's that? You're wiping at least 10,000 hit points off every experimental in the area. That adds up. That's several thousand. Oh, 15,000. And looks like Grumpy's finally had enough. He's moving his commander up front. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Scotty flies some ASF over there using them. Um, I'm not sure what that was for. Wait a miss click. Of course, Supreme Commander or Subcom Head kicking in at this stage with just a few moments off the mark of Epicosity. Do it the like button if you've enjoyed the game so far. In comes yet another Billy from Fong. Don't like my video, at least like Fong's antics. And that is a lot of strap bombers that <laughs> get one pass. Partially damage a single chicken. There are several more. And there's Grumpy. I wouldn't like to be in his shoes right now. And he is no more. Grumpy going down. Just three minutes shy of the full hour. And that leaves Scorpio all by his lonesome. <laughs> and flung. Not content where he is. Lobs in yet another Billy. Why not shave off a few more hit points off those GCs? Scorpy fires out a nuke. Where's that one going? Oh, it's a defensive nuke. Looks like Team 2 have read that and they're trying to spread their units out as quickly as possible. And the units move out just before the nuke moves in. Might bag himself the last two experimentals, but the first three... All four have gotten out. A 
Another GC off the conveyor belt just in time there from Scorpy. One of the attacking chickens goes down, but we've got a huge amount of economic structures going down now. Saz throws fuel onto the fire as he brings an experimental bomber in. Let's get a shot of that. Slow time down. More billies from Fog. Actually, the experimental bomber is shot down for not very much. Probably one of the few underwhelming units we've seen all game. Pretty much everybody else has done well. And Scorpy finally throws out the GG there. Let's go back to full pace. Where's Fong? Where is he? He's <laughs> still on the front line with his billy. Just want to see, and there it goes. The game's finished, and Fong ends up the game with 176,000 mass. Yeah, showing all UEF players how to play UEF. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you enjoyed the game. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, thank you very much, especially to those who support the channel. You know you are. Thank you to everybody else who's ever left a nice comment a like or anything else, even the constructive criticism such as don't play AI generated music in the middle of a game because it ruins it. Yeah, that was my bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time. Oh, no music on the outro this time. But what have I done wrong? I pressed the wrong button somewhere at some point. Never mind. Until next time. See you again. Bye bye.